All right, guys, here's the age-old question. Does gear ratios have an impact on fuel economy on modern trucks? I wanna dive into this, let's do this. If you're new to my channel, you'll notice one of the things I talk about in my videos is fuel economy. I love chasing efficiency in vehicles, looking between different engines, different manufacturers, different propulsion systems, diesel versus gas versus hybrid versus electric. I like knowing at the end of the day, what does my cost per mile to drive any vehicle? Because this has an impact on how much money is in my pocket at the end of the day or how good of an investment is the power boost versus the two seven or diesel versus gas or whatever answer. I've done this research and I like comparing the things to help you guys out. There's a channel I watch, which I think is really great channel. They bring a lot of great content. They just did a video comparing 331, I believe, or 355 gears versus 373 gears in a Ford F-150. Okay. They actually netted one mile per gallon better fuel economy with a 5.0 2024 F-150 with 373 gears versus a F-150 with a 5.0 but with the smaller gear ratio, I think 331 or 355s. But there's a problem with this comparison. I did a video about three months ago, I'll include a link down below, comparing big differences that Ford did for 2023 to 2024 in the F-150. Most people just recognize the differences in the new F-150 as front fascia, maybe your wheels, your rear tail lights, some interior changes. If you go higher trim levels like this Lariat, this has heads up display. Okay, that's cool. But the fuel economy impacts specifically on the 5.0 for 2024. When you compare apples to apples, 2023 to 2024, you get a two mile per gallon highway improvement on the 2024. You could say, well, it's the same truck. It's the same motor. It's the same this, it's the same that. Well, then where did this two mile per gallon come from from the EPA standard? My sources have told me there's some nuances between 2023 and 2024, which has changed every single engine in 2024 from 2023 to net you different fuel economy. As I mentioned, I have a video that goes through every single powertrain and shows the fuel economy impacts from 2023 to 2024. Everyone wants to say it's the same engine, but something's changed. The engines, the hardware, generally speaking, are the same. The aerodynamics are very similar, but the differences are around the calibration and the EPA testing, which has given people a two mile per gallon highway fuel economy improvement for 2024. I've already tested 2023s and 2024s back to back, smaller gear ratio versus higher gear ratio, and I've shown the higher gear ratio uh, gets worse fuel economy. A 373 gets worse fuel economy than a 331 or 355. Now there's caveats to this. If you don't have a standardized test, a standardized loop, the same day of the week, the same driver, the same conditions, if you have a five mile per hour difference in wind speed, that could net you 5% difference in efficiency. 5% on 20 miles per gallon? Well, that's one mile per gallon. I share this with you because there's a lot of people that don't bring this into their results when they share this stuff on YouTube. And it's important for you guys to understand that you need to have standardized test protocols or you can throw out the whole data. So I'm sharing this with you guys because this video I think is a bit misleading because it shows a truck with 331s or 355s versus 373s and it shows 373 gears getting better fuel economy. I'm not saying that can't happen, but what I am saying is, if I go and take the exact same two trucks with the exact same gear ratios from 2023 to 2024, your 24 truck gets you a two mile per gallon bump per the EPA fuel economy standard, which I am showing on the screen. So you can kind of see. So then you could say, why don't we go do a comparison between these different gear ratio trucks and see if a difference. Perfect, I already covered that. I've done it multiple times. I have videos to prove this, but I'll do it again in the future just to show this. But a 20 mile loop, a 50 mile loop, maybe even a 100 mile loop is probably not precise enough to pick up a 5% difference, even just between build quality between the diff two different brands. This is why you need to have standardized tests. And the only thing standardized that can provide Rep repeatable results is the EPA test certification. It has same conditions and the same conditions net you two mile per gallon improvement for 2024. So 
If you're interested in knowing more about this, if you want to see more information comparing gear ratio videos, I'm happy to do this. I just completed some videos on gas versus diesel on the uh, Power Strokes and the 7.3. I'm actually planning to do another video of a truck just like this, both the same cab configuration, same engines, ideally same uh, trim uh, as far as both Lariats, both XLTs, doesn't matter. But I wanna go do the same drive loop, non-towing, 373 gears versus 430s in a Godzilla motor to see if we see a difference. It'll be interesting to see. Anyhow, if you're chasing fuel economy, do your homework, do your research, get into the details. If you plan on lifting a truck, you're gonna get an F-150, and maybe one day you're planning on going from these 32-inch tires to a 34-inch tire, it might make sense in some can situations to actually get a different drive ratio. So instead of getting 355s, get the 373s. Like this truck right here has, this has 355 gears, two sevens. If maybe you knew you're gonna go to taller tires, maybe it's not a bad idea to jump that 355 to 373s because you're gonna 10% bump in tire size, which believe it or not, that drops your rear end ratio. You're kind of like changing your tire size. is kind of like changing your gearing. So you could potentially get better fuel economy if you put a higher gear ratio with a taller tire so your final drive ratio is the same. These manufacturers have spent tens of billions of dollars, all of them, chasing fuel economy gains. They won't build vehicles that provide worse fuel economy because it penalizes them financially if they have to build trucks with worse fuel economy, it hurts their cafe standards, and then they need to sell more stuff like this, more electric vehicles to offset the cost of this. So Ford's goal is make the F-150 as most efficient as possible to get the best fuel economy. So if you continue to like these mile per gallon comparisons and just trying to go in through this, I try to provide as standardized protocol as possible. Some of the stuff's outside of my control, wind direction, there's things that I can't control, but what I can do is try to be as accurate as possible. But get into the details. There's a big difference from 2023 to 2024 in the F-150s across every powertrain for fuel economy. I'll include a link for fueleconomy.gov, which is what the government uses for the EPA for fuel economy standards and where your certifications are set. And you'll see these numbers for yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.